All right, boom, we are recording. What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Tucker back at it again for some more flow slash cadence content. You might notice that I'm actually in a different setting here. So I'm actually at home now. Um, no longer in my disgusting college dorm. We got some nice little stockings in the back. But anyway, let's get right into it. So this video is going to be talking about um, actually creating accounts on Flow and deploying smart contracts uh, to them. And this is going to be on Testnet because like I mentioned in previous videos, I usually work with Testnet because I think on Flow, it's a lot easier than Emulator, just the way that accounts work and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, this is going to be a video on creating and deploying, creating accounts and deploying contracts to them on Testnet. So I, what I have is a VS code open um, in a folder called deploying test. Nothing's here. So we're going to be doing all of this from scratch. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to a terminal and go to um, sort of like the repository that you want to be in. The real thing you want to do first is to go to onflow.org and you want to install the flow CLI. So you've probably done this before if you've watched my previous videos, but if you haven't go to docs.onflows.org slash um, flow dash CLI slash install. And you're going to install it for your specific, you know, computer. So I'm on a windows right now. So I installed it just by copy and pasting this and pasting it into a prompt. I've already done this though. So once you've done that, you should be able to type flow version. I believe it is or, or flow version. Oh, look. Okay. So I guess I haven't deployed it on this. I haven't actually installed it on this yet. So I guess we can do that together. Right? So I'll copy and paste this, go to my windows prompt and copy it in. And maybe honestly, this will be better just so I can, you know, do this with you guys. So, so I'm actually happy it didn't work. So you'll see, I just added it. So this is literally from nothing, right? And then I should be able to type flow version and boom, um, it will come up now with the version, hopefully. So there we go, right? Version 0.30.1. Cool. All right. So once you do that, you're going to want to type in flow init. And what flow init is going to do, it's going to say configuration initialize. And so if we go to our project, if we go to our VS code here, you'll see there's a new file called flow.json. And inside this file, there's a couple things. There's an emulators object, which we're not going to look at since we're doing this all in testnet. There's a contracts object, which we're definitely going to look at because that's going to be important in a bit. That, that's where we're going to list all our contracts. The networks, we're not really going to look at this. The accounts object. So this is where we're going to store all of our account information. You'll see there's already a default emulator account object, but we're not going to really be using this since we're going to be on testnet and making our own testnet accounts. And then a deployments object. And so we're going to be using this to actually deploy our contracts. Cool. So what we want to do is we actually want to create a new testnet account. Now, the way that you do that, I'm going to clear this again, is you type in flow keys generate dash dash sig uh, dash algo. And then we're going to list our signature algorithm when we create this account, which is going to be in quotation marks, ECDSA underscore SECP 256K1. So I have no idea what this means, but this should be uh, pretty exciting. So if we run enter, it's going to come up with a private key and public key. So a private key is a private key and public key are basically essential to any um, account on the blockchain, right? A public key is something you can share with others. A private key is something you should never share with anybody. I'm just, you know, of course it doesn't matter for me because this is just a test account. I will never put actual stuff on here. It's on test it anyway, whatever. So we have our private key and public key here. Cool. So we want to be able to store this somewhere. Well, let's go ahead and make our own testnet account object. So testnet account object. Um, and we're going to open up some brackets here. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put some dummy information here that I'm going to copy and paste from my notes. And I hate when YouTubers do this because it's really annoying as the viewer, but I'm going to do it anyway, because, um, yeah. So basically what we have is an address. And right now this is sort of like a dummy value because we aren't really like, we don't have an address yet. We're going to have an address soon and then a key object. So on flow keys are really important because uh, you know, each account can have multiple keys associated with it. And when you sign a transaction, you need to have a certain key weight. So that's a little complicated and we'll get into that probably in future videos. But all you have to know for now is that there's a key object where you have to specify the type is hex, the index is zero, the signature algorithm is going to be ECDSA, whatever we typed in here, right? So remember when we created our key, we used this signature algorithm. So we're going to make sure that's what's listed here. The hash algorithm by default is SHA-3256. Um, and the private key we have, right? So we, there's some dummy information here, but let's go ahead and take our private key like so, and we're going to copy it into this right here. So what we need to do now is we need to get an address, right? And we don't have this yet, but we, what we can do is go to a special page. Let me just refresh this page. 
called testnet-faucet.onflow.org. So you'll go to this link, I'll put it in the description, but this is where we're actually gonna be creating our account officially, right? So we have a public and private key, but we don't have an account yet. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So the first thing you have to do is paste your public key. So let's go and get our public key. Let's copy this and paste our public key here. And we're gonna have to change the signature algorithm to be ECDSA, SECP, whatever, um, and keep your hash algorithm the same. So once we do that, we're gonna click I am human, and we're gonna click all the motor buses. So I historically struggle with this, but let's, I, I don't know, is this a motor bus or is that a train? Let's just click it anyway. Verify, boom, I'm human. I guess that was a bus and we'll click create account. So hopefully if everything works, which it doesn't half the time because some of these things are annoying, but let's hope it works. And if it does, we'll have our address. Um, so it's being generated and boom. Okay, it worked. Yes. So it says, congratulations, your new testnet account has been created and it gives us an address. So, and it also by default added a thousand flow token to our account, which is really nice. So that's this is all a testnet though, right? So let's go ahead and copy and paste our address and put it into here. Boom. Now we officially have an account. Here is our address. And we can actually view the contracts that are in this account, which should be nothing, right? So if we go to a web page and we go to, let's say, flow-viewsource.com slash testnet slash account, and let's go in and paste our address. You'll see it will actually, it'll come up, right? So this account exists now. It has a thousand flow in it because it just gave us a thousand by default. It has one key, right? So everything's working, right? And this information is what we already listed. So we, you know, the EC, you know, that's, that's sort of what it looks like right here. But boom, our account exists. But it says there's zero contracts in it, right? And that makes sense uh, because there's no contracts right now. So let's actually go to the Flow Playground and let's take a sample Hello World contract. So I'm literally just going to copy and paste this example Hello World contract. This is what you get, by the way, if you just go to play.onflow.org. So I, I didn't actually make this myself. So let's just go there and you'll see it comes up with this example contract. So let's go ahead and copy this contract. And let's make a new folder called contracts. This is what you'll this is what you'll probably be doing in your own projects. Contracts folder. And let's make a new file called hello world.cdc. Boom. And let's copy and paste in our transaction code. So here we are. Here's our transaction code. Uh, and we want to deploy this to our account now. So what we can do is go to flow.json and let's go to this contracts, you know, object here. And what we can do is say, uh, open our quotes and uh, the contract is going to be named hello world, right? So that's, that's what's listed right here. Hello world. And in here, we have to put a path to that file. So dot slash contracts slash hello world dot CDC, right? So that's the path to get to this, con to get to this, uh, contract right here. Awesome. And now what we want to do is we want to deploy this contract to test an account. So let's go to deployments. Let's open our quotes and type in testnet and then open an object and then uh, open another quotes and type in testnet account like so, and then open an array. So the default structure here is under deployments, you put the network, which is testnet. And then inside testnet, you put testnet account, then open up a brackets, right? So, 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 oh no, sorry. So square brackets, right? And then in here, we're going to put the name of the contract. So hello world, boom. Now what we can do is we can go to our Windows PowerShell and we can clear and we can type in flow project deploy dash dash network testnet. And if we run this, it's going to say deploying one contracts for accounts testnet account. It's currently deploying. So let's wait for, for de to deploy. And hopefully if everything goes through, then it will have deployed our contract to testnet. So it says all contracts deployed successfully. If we go back to our um, web page here, and go to the view source. We now see it's automatically updated it for us. And boom, our contract is on testnet. Woo hoo, woo. So that's all awesome. Now I just want to go over some other quick things. If you want to deploy some contracts in order, so let's actually like if we were to make a new file called like um like a uh, new contract. I don't know. I'm just I'm just naming stuff. And you know we do public contract, uh, new contract like so. But in this contract, it actually relied on hello world. What we could do is we could say import hello world from dot slash hello world dot CDC. So if we wanted to import our contract into this one, you can put a file path here because of the fact that we put our contract in the flow.json, the, the, the path name here. So it knows what this means. It knows that we can have, you know, local file paths here. But what we would have to do is also add, you know, the new contract inside here as well. 
so that everything worked uh, just fine and dandy. So if we put slash contract slash new contract dot CDC, like so, then this would work and we would get syntax highlighting and all that. But the other point was that if we wanted to deploy both of these to the test at the same time, you have to make sure that in your array here, you put new contract after. And the reason for that is because this array deploys in order. So it'll deploy hello world first, then new contract second. So you have to make sure of that. And we, I guess we could test this again. I, I, I think this should work. If we tried it again, but it's saying, look, deploying two contracts, contract hello world is already deployed. So it, it's just going to skip that. And then it's just going to deploy new contract here. And let's see if this goes through. Hopefully, and it's just failed to deploy all contracts. Now, I think that's, oh no, it, it did deploy it. Oh yeah, okay. So I don't know. Oh, oh, it's saying failed to deploy all contracts because it didn't deploy hello world because it was already deployed, but it, it ended up working, right? So it deployed new contract and notice what happened here. Inside of our, you know, in new contract, we had like a local file path here. But if we go to our view source, it automatically converted it to an address. And that's because of the fact that flow.json is keeping track of these things in this object right here. So it knows that they're on the same. So that's all, that's all I have to say. So that's creating a testnet account, deploying contracts on testnet and viewing it on the view source. And uh, that's all I have for this video. So thanks for watching. Oh, and happy holidays to all of you. You know, it's the holiday season. I hope all of you are able to spend time with friends and family. If you have any, you know, cadence projects you're working on or if you need any help, you know, you can always reach out to me. I'm here for you. But seriously, enjoy the holidays and uh, I'll keep posting some content, but have a great one.